Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here and welcome back to the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Now, today we have a bit of a different show. We have our Ask Me Anything episode today. So these are questions that I have been provided by you as the listeners or um, along the way, along the journey um, in our day-to-day practice that I want to provide answers to you for in a quick podcast session. So today, I'll run through a few and we will be integrating this into our podcast from time to time. Now, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, then please send it to us at podcasts at aspectlegal.com.au and we'll put that link in the show note. Now, here we go with a very quick session for you. Vanessa, welcome yes. to our Ask Me Anything. <laughs> this is a good space. <laughs> <laughs> so fairly new segment. Um, only had it the last six months or so. This is where you get the chance to ask me anything. What Perfect. would you like to ask today, Vanessa? Well, I think on my first question um, would be, I'd like to ask on in terms of somebody who's selling a business, um, what are you actually finding when somebody comes to you to sell a business? What's their biggest struggle? Um, and I guess, are they selling privately? Are they going through a business broker? What, like, what struggles are those business owners facing? Yeah, my, most of, I'd say 80, 90% of businesses that come to us are using a broker or corporate advisor of some description. Um, there are, you, you know, a component that won't be. Actually, maybe it's slightly less because I guess included in there are businesses where um, sellers are selling out to um, employees or employees are slowly starting uh, to get equity in the business over time. We're helping them with, um, you know, those sort of employee share arrangements um, and succession paths based on that. But, um, you know, sort of 70 to 80 percent are um, have a business broker or or corporate advisor. And, and what are their issues? Um, what, what are the concerns? I think one of the big issues is that, and we, we touched on this in um, a previous episode uh, that we have recorded together, but um, the lack of preparation for sale and not fully understanding the process. And, um, and, and I think one of the issues is that um, depending on the business sale, on the transaction, that has been negotiated, some of these can progress really quickly and easily um, through the contract phase with the right process. So we have a really strong focus on process and, and, you know, what happens where and we're able to take clients through. Um, But some deals can be complicated. And it's really important that sellers understand that possibility. And in one of our last podcasts, you talked about energy and sellers having energy, and that is a really important component, them having the energy to see out the process. Um, So that's the first thing, not being fully prepared. Quite often, they completely don't understand the tax outcomes um, and that can lead to difficult outcomes because sometimes it means right at the end when they finally realise they need to go and consult with their accountants and, or tax advisor, we have to change components of the deal. That can be really painful. Um, mm. And the, the last element is... Um, is this risk of the buy pulling out? We've had a lot of this in the last year. It, it's been far more prevalent in the last year than it ever was prior to that period. That that for us is the one biggest thing that's changed post COVID. It's um, an increase in our in my perspective in the deals that we run. Um, and we're running a lot of deals at the moment um, in buyers pulling out. And that is hugely, hugely painful um, for sellers. Obviously, um, quite often it's painful for buyers as well because there's a multitude of reasons why buyers pull out. Um, it's a it's a huge issue and um, there's no one answer to solve that. But, um, but yeah, that, that can be a real pain point. Sorry, really long answer. I'm not sure that was the biggest one, but anyway, there are a few. No, it makes sense. And I guess (laughs) that kind of, I guess, leads on to my other thought or my other question is in relation to buyers. If somebody's going to buy a business, do you get many buyers, I guess, approaching you 
to assist with due diligence? If so, what size of businesses they buying? Um, and if they're not necessarily approaching you, what do you think the reasoning is behind that? Yeah, due diligence is an interesting one. Um, due diligence is absolutely critical in a business. The legal due diligence element sometimes is really important and sometimes, you know, there isn't a lot of risk level sitting in the business itself. So it depends on the size of the business, the industry that the business is in um, and, and the details of the transaction itself as to whether or not as to how important due diligence is. When we're in a share sale environment, due diligence is always, always very important. When we're in a business sale environment, it depends on the industry size and those sorts of things. Um, we uh, we are absolutely approached by buyers to help with due diligence. There's very varying levels of understanding about the the why there is a need for due diligence and what that looks like. And 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 I have a book that I've released recently where I really stepped this out in the buyer section as, as to what the role of due diligence is and why it's so important. And, and just as a snapshot, it's it's there to test that the value that you think that you're getting out of the acquisition is there mm -hmm. and to test that that value will transfer and to test that there are not other risks that you'll be taking on as a buyer from business in the business that you're not aware of. So that's sort of the, it's a value, value transfer and risk um, testing environment. And of course, um, you, it, there is no such thing as perfect, but we, we have clients who have bought, say, you know, 100 grand businesses who um, who need due diligence and have come to us for due diligence. Um, all the way up to I have clients that, um, you know, aggregators that we work on for multi-million dollar acquisitions who, um, you know, sometimes don't feel that they need legal due diligence because they have their own process. So it all depends mm, how sense. much buyers understand the industry, understand what they're doing, mm -hmm. understand the type of business that they're acquiring, how much um they'll need from us. And we've actually quite recently, uh, we, you and I talked recently on an innovation series. I love innovation, always about innovation. <laughs> um, and so in, in the theory of innovation, I actually came up with a product recently called a basic due diligence product um, mm. package, which we're now offering to the market. And um, it, I've only had it sort of in the current form that it's in for probably a couple of months. And buyers are loving it because yeah. it's a way that we can step out due diligence in a really easy way for them. Because one of the things that I have to say, so so generally any, any transaction that is more than a few million, um, the, the, there, there will almost always be you know, a, a solid portion of legal due diligence that goes with it. But the, the problem with due diligence from a legal perspective is how long is a piece of string? Where do you stop in yeah. what you're actually looking at? And what I did with the legal due diligence package is create something that makes it really easy for small to medium-sized um, acquisitions, uh, buyers in small to medium-sized acquisitions, be able to run a lot of the process themselves, be able to work out what needs um, review themselves, but also do that hand in hand together with a lawyer. And that's sort of the idea, you know, idea of a lot of products that I um, bring through Aspect Legal is making the types of services that once only large organisations in large acquisitions had available to them, turning mm. them into something that's cost effective and able and accessible for the SME market. Yeah, and I think that's brilliant. I think that's one of those innovations that's definitely needed. Um, I feel like buyers, they're just not, I don't know what the, I don't know if taken care of is the right word, or it's just mm. a lot of the time when they go to buy a business, let's say a business broker is the one brokering the deal, they kind of rely on that business broker to help them through the deal. If that makes sense? Like they yeah. they communicate with the broker and the broker's like, no, no, do this, do this, do this, don't do this. But it's, there's such a conflict of interest there, personally, I think. Like they're obviously selling that business. And I'm not saying they're working badly or there's any issues with it, but there's definitely a conflict of interest when you're telling the buyer what to do in relation to buy the business that they're trying to sell. Um, so I think there's a lot of work there for a lot of, you know, innovation there available for that independent, you know, here's how you should go about it 
don't necessarily rely on the person selling the business to tell you how to go about it. Yeah, well, and due diligence is actually, it's actually this massive opportunity for a buyer to really get to understand the business in a way they may not have thought to get Mm. to understand the business. So I see it as a huge, huge, huge opportunity in terms of like, Getting that, it's, you know, it is about risk management, risk mitigation, but it's also about getting that deep understanding of the business that you're about to be knee deep in. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, and a way of pulling that, um, that, that corporate knowledge within the organization that you may not otherwise have asked or thought to get, um, Mm -hmm. you know, into depth on. So anyway, I think due diligence, super important, but, um, but in, in, in bite-sized chunks that, that are appropriate for the acquisition that you're doing. Yeah. makes sense. That's brilliant. I think it's great. I think it's very much needed. (laughs) <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Vanessa, I just want to say a huge thank you for coming <laughs> into the you. show today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Joe. Well, that's it for our Ask Me Anything episode today. I hope you found that useful. Now, we've got a few more of these style podcasts coming up soon. I find it invaluable to be able to answer these top of mind questions, whether they're from our guests, our audience, or our client. Now, if you have a specific topic or question that you'd like us to discuss, then submit your Ask Me Anything questions to podcast at aspectlegal.com. Dot com dot au, or check out the show notes to this episode where we will link right through to an email for you to submit to submit your Ask Me Anything questions. And an important reminder that if you would like any legal assistance with matters that you're working on at the moment, then don't forget you can book in for an initial free call directly with our legal eagles at Aspect Legal by heading to our homepage at Aspect Legal legal.com.au. Well, that's it for me today. My name is Joanna Oki, and you've been listening to another wonderful episode of our podcast, proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. I am so very excited to announce that I've hit a non-podcast related milestone and released a book. You might wonder why? Simple. I wanted to help business owners understand the mechanics of deal making and the interaction between three critical phases of business, acquisition, growth, and exit. And so I am very happy to announce Buy, Grow, Exit, a guidebook for business owners and their advisors on how to buy, grow, and guess what, exit in a way that maximizes value and avoids landmines along the way. The book is available now, so just head over to buygrowexit.com.au to get your copy and to access a whole heap of free resources that will really help you on your journey of acquisition, growth, and exit in your business or in working with your clients. Also check out our show notes where we will link straight through to that page. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. that will conclude this evening's energy. Thanks for listening to the Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au. Oh.